Hi, welcome to 100% LCFC TV again. And I'm here with all the man who's got all the stats. It's Dan Middleton. Hi, Dan. Hi again. You all right? Good to see you. Good to see you. So you brought us all the stats earlier this week from the Man City game. Gives us a little bit of insight into how the game played out there. But you've got a few stats for us before the Arsenal game, which is in a couple of days. Yeah, as promised, uh, the Sunday fixture between Arsenal and Leicester. I have a lot of stats here ready to, to give you all. Um, and hopefully give you an insight into the game. Yeah. So give us some of the big ones, Dan. What's what's some of the exciting stats going forward? Well, some of the exciting stats. They've played 61 games um, at Arsenal and Leicester have only won six. Um, so that's a percentage of 9.84. So 10% of the games we've won at the Emirates and Arsenal won 38 of those 61. Um, so going into the game already, Omens, if you're looking at the stats, it's not going to be good for Leicester if you, look, if you base it simply on that stat. Um, and obviously they won... Five too early on in the season, unfortunately. Um, but again, they dominated possession at the King Power, and against Arsenal, you've got to shut the room down and stop them from playing the ball around. I think in that game earlier on in the season, the five-two, we went we went toe to toe with Arsenal, which I think we tried to play Arsenal too much at their own game, and on the day they un- they undid us. And I think the five-two scoreline, which is the biggest stat from that game, was a little bit skewed because. Uh, being at the game, it never felt like it was a 5-2 game. But I, I must admit, Arsenal did feel like they edged it. So, Well, that, that's the difference, isn't it? Arsenal have got world-class players and they, they can turn it like that. They can turn it in an instant. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what they did. Vardy, a superb finish to put us 1-0 up and everyone was in dreamland. Um, and then the class of Arsenal showed going to 4-1 with about two minutes left. And obviously that's game over and it knocks the stuffing out of you. Sanchez was absolutely amazing for Arsenal that day. Some days you just have to turn around and say, God, I've just seen a, a top, top player. And Sanchez that day was world cast. We'll be hoping that Marez now and Vardy and Albright, some of these players, Kante, who, who people are starting to tout as being, you know, the proper real deal, play for us like that. Well, we, we'd hope so. Um, I think Vardy, Marez, Kante, no words can describe how good they've been this season. Um, and I think they've got majority of the plaudits, but you have to give credit to the back five. I think we've been so solid this season. I think Huth and Morgan yeah. is a superb yeah. partnership. Christian Fuchs, who came in in the summer, was a very, very good sign. And Danny Simpson's fitted in the role. And Schmeichel, don't need to say anything about Schmeichel. He's been there, been there, done it for the past few seasons for us. That's right. I mean, Huth and, Huth and Morgan, they really aren't getting the credit. I don't think they're due. But, you know, they have played fantastic. So, Dan, give us some more stats for, for Sunday's game. Well, going before, obviously, when we played Man City, we kept six clean sheets in seven games. Um, so that's both home and away. So yeah. defensively, we were a lot tighter. Um, but at the Emirates, Arsenal against us averaged 2.34 points a game. And we only averaged just under a point, so 0.97. So going into the game again, we're not overly convincing at the Emirates. Um, and in the game at the King Power, Arsenal had 58% possession with 12 shots on goal. So we need to limit Arsenal shots and shooting chances in and around the final third if we're going to have any chance of winning at the Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, last year's game at Arsenal was a, a 2-1 defeat. Um, Kramerich scored quite a good goal there. And, uh, and you know, people started to think, was he going to become a player? But he never really, that seemed to be his highlight for us. So no, it was weird for Kramerich. I don't really know why he didn't really get a chance. I quite liked him. Um, and it was a good finish, like you said, at, at Arsenal last season. But, yeah, he's gone to, to Hoffenheim now um, on loan. Bit of a weird one, but I swear I think we've got a recall option on his contract. So you know, if we, if we need him, we can call him back. I think we'll play a similar type of tactic again, may, uh, as we did away at Man City, a, a sort of a four-four, almost one-one or four-four-two. It is. Um, I'm sure Vardy and Okazaki will start up front. Do you agree? I, I, I'd like to see that. I think we'll actually go four-three-three and go Mares um, with Vardy and Okazaki, and then. Defensively, if we go four three three going forward, defensively you then got to push to a four five one. Yeah. Have the five in midfield, potentially Kante dropping, and then just showing up. So you end up playing a four one four one formation, which suits Leicester because obviously you're not a lot more compact in midfield, and then you can hit on the counter attack, which is what we've done so well this season. Yeah, I mean, I expect those statistics that you'll be bringing us next week post match will be that again we probably have thirty five. Yeah, 40% possession. I don't see us having more than that. That's our game. That's been the story of the season. We've we've soaked up the, a lot of pressure from any side really and hit them on the break, and they've not been able to to combat us. We've no, we've been 
so fast going forward. Vardy's yeah. pace. In away at Man City last week, Dan, we had you talk about that pace of us attacking, going forward and breaking. There was three or four breaks we had that didn't result in goals. But you know, Danny Drinkwater was picking the ball up on the edge of our box and then ending up inside their box, you know, yeah. causing danger. That he's pace and break. He's been the unsung hero for Leicester this season. I don't think he's got as many plaudits as the likes as Ka- of Kante, Mahrez and, and Vardy, but he should be up there. I think him and Kante have been absolutely outstanding. And like you said, picking the ball up on your own box and going 70 yards against Man City, he's yeah. never been seen before from any midfielder. So. Who's going to be your key man on Sunday then for Leicester? Do you think oh, Porter? That's, that's a big question, putting me on the spot, because every man, every man in the eleven has been superb this season. Um yeah. You can't look any further than Vardy, just because of the form he's in. Um, and obviously he'll be closing Murta Saka and Koscielny down. And they've probably never seen a striker do that so far this season, apart from when they came to the King Power. Um, and potentially Kante again, just because Arsenal very good in possession, going through midfield. Ozil picking up the number 10 role in behind the midfield and defence. Um, and Kante is going to have a, a big job on his hands, but he's more than capable. I, I agree with what you're saying with Vardy. Against Liverpool, he looked back to... Th- nearly his best. Man City looked better than I've probably ever seen him. I know he didn't score, but he looked on fire. Some of the things and flicks and tricks he was trying and shots, he looked just absolutely brimming with confidence. So I, I agree with you. I think Vardy could be a key man, but it's a key 11 men, isn't it, who are playing at the moment and yeah. the subs who come on. That, that's the thing. I think so far this season, we've, yes, we've had individual players that have been brilliant, um, but the whole team has been outstanding and the work rate as a squad, as a unit has been outstanding. Obviously, me being in Wrexham, not being able to get to the games, I've had to sort of watch sort of streams or picking up on stats like I'm doing now and seeing how the game progresses. And by the looks of it, again, it's typical Leicester. We soak up the pressure and just hit them on the break and yeah. it results in a goal. So hopefully we can pick up the three points on Sunday and, you know, we stay top and, and start to build the gaps. Brilliant. All right, Dan, thanks for joining us again. We look forward to chatting post-Arsenal. Hopefully the biggest stat you're going to bring us is a, an away win. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. But if not, we'll, we'll dissect some of the stats with you next week. Yep, 100%. Thanks, Dan. See you next week. Thanks very much. Cheers.